Hi everybody, this is Miss Carol Novosel. Today I'm in the kitchen of St. John the Baptist Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Sharon, PA. This is my home church. I was baptized here, I was married here. And um, since I cook, one of the favorite foods at camp, especially in the summer, was to make stuffed hot dogs. It's a hot dog with cheese in the middle wrapped in bacon. So I'm going to show you how to do that, okay? So this is to make stuffed dogs for four people. Two hot dogs apiece. I have a pack of eight regular size hot dogs. I have three or four slices of American cheese and I have eight slices of bacon. Now I'm putting the cheese on a separate pl uh, cutting board because I don't know, sometimes people are allergic to dairy products, and so I'm in the habit of separating my foods. I have a separate knife for the cheese, too. The, the first thing I'm going to do is take my hot dog and cut a slit down long ways, lengthwise, from top to bottom, and I'm not cutting the whole way through. I cut right down the middle, not the whole way through. So I'm going to do it with all, all eight hot dogs. So the oven has been turned on to 325 degrees and it has preheated to that. These usually cook in the oven about 25 minutes and um, the whole idea is to get the bacon to be completely cooked. Hot dogs, you know, are pre-cooked. They're, they're not raw. They're fully cooked. The American cheese is fully cooked. It's only the bacon that isn't. So now all of my hot dogs are ready. And I'm going to take the cheese, and I'm going to stack two slices of cheese together. Okay. And I'm going to cut some very slim double cheese. Okay, so these are going to go inside of the hot dog, so that's how big they are. You can eyeball it. And what I need is I need a strip and a half for every hot dog. So, uh, first of all, I need eight strips. There's five, six, seven, eight. And now I need half strips, so one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. So I open up a hot dog and I put a double piece of cheese inside of it and then a half piece. And I'll do this quickly with all the hot dogs. If you believe YouTube and Google and the experts, Americans eat a few billion hot dogs every year. People like hot dogs, even vegetarians, vegans, they have their own versions of meatless hot dogs. Hot dogs are also called wieners, frankfurters, and there was actually a, a big discussion and a big debate between the city of Vienna, Austria, which in Austrian you would call Wien, and Frankfurt, Germany, because both cities thought in the 1400s they had invented this hot dog. So one called it a Frankfurter or a Frank, the other one called it a Wiener. Now in America, a German guy started selling hot dogs in his cart on the street and he put them in soft buns so it was the first time the hot dog was in a bun and not just on a plate like a piece of kobasi. That made Americans love them. In fact when um, Eleanor Roosevelt, who was President Roosevelt's wife during the end of the Great Depression and before World War II really got going she served hot dogs to, to um, a king from Europe, and he loved them and had seconds, and then hot dogs were the food. 
for America, especially in um, times when people didn't have a lot of jobs and money. Okay, so now I have all of the cheese in the hot dogs. Okay, and now for the fun part, I'm going to wrap each hot dog with a strip of bacon. This is not hard. It just takes a little bit of thinking, first of all. What I'm going to do is every piece of bacon has meat on one end, a lot extra meat on one end. So I'm going to put the meat towards an end of the hot dog. And then I'm just going to wrap the bacon, stretch it a little bit, wrap it around and around that hot dog. And I'm putting it a little bit on top of what's already there. So the bacon kind of covers itself slightly. And then I have round toothpicks. This is kind of important because uh, you need to put toothpicks in to hold the bacon in place, but you would never want anybody to bite into a toothpick. So these are round. These are also round, which is better than a flat toothpick to pull out. So I have a round toothpick and my hot dog is like this with the cheese on top. The cheese is facing up. I want to put my toothpick in from side to side only with the cheese facing up. And then this I will put into a baking dish. My baking dish I put um, some parchment paper in it to make up, uh, clean up easier. You can put wax paper or anything. And so I'm going to wrap the rest of the hot dogs and get them into the oven. So here are eight stuffed dogs ready to go in the oven. It's uh, sliced hot dogs with cheese in the middle wrapped with bacon. And the toothpicks you can see go side to side. And you'll go into the oven. for 25 minutes and then I'll check them to see that the bacon is. Okay, let's take them out of the oven. They look just perfect. The bacon is well done, the cheese is melting. Yum. So, I have eight buns. You can butter the buns. You can put your mustard and ketchup. You can put anything you want on these. So I have my hot dog and I'm counting one, two. Two toothpicks out. That's important. It's important that you count your toothpicks. One, two. You know, because somebody might come in the room and say something to you, something else might go on, you might hear something or daydream a bit. And so when you count, one, two, then your eye is on the ball. What do you think? Do you remember these from camp? Or if you've never had them, I think you would like them. We will be attaching the recipe. Of course, my recipe said, and I changed it, it said, for 80 children, you need 100 hot dogs, 100 buns, so many pounds of bacon. Okay, all of the toothpicks are out. a plate of stuffed hot dogs. A wonderful table decoration is a pineapple with goodies on it. Strawberries, cheese, olives. Uh, anything coming into season, little tomatoes, blackberries, slices of pepper. I'm going to take this pineapple, and if you look at a pineapple, it's got diagonal rows going on it. It's divided beautifully in sections. The rows could go up and down, they could go around, and that's what I use to make a pattern on the pineapple with food. I have 
one pound of cheddar cheese that I cut into cubes. I have two 12 ounce cans of jumbo olives and I have two quarts of fresh strawberries. I cut the cheese, I took the olives out of their juice and drained them, I washed the strawberries and I cut the stem, the green part, straight off the top. I didn't hollow it out. Sometimes if you're gonna eat a strawberry, people hollow it out, but I left it like that. And I'm going to put these on the pineapple and I'm using um, beautiful four inch frilly toothpicks. So I love green and red together because the, it's like a green leaf almost for the strawberry. So my strawberries are like that. The blue is with the yellow orange and then the black olives are so dark I put the lightest toothpick, the yellow with them. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is pick a line to go down, and I think I'll do strawberries. Now at the top, I'm going to put smaller strawberries. So there's one. Two. Three. Four five, and I'll get a big one for the bottom, six. And you can see that it spirals down. Now, I'm going to figure out kind of where one third of the way is. If I was going to make a triangle, it would probably be here and here. So I'm going to go here and do the same thing, but you can use any pattern you want. You can do anything at all. And I'm going to Put strawberries down. All right. I'm going to move it a little bit more. I think I'll actually be able to fit four spiral rows on here. And I'm just kind of using the line that the strawberry or that the um, pineapple tells me to go around. Now, already by itself, this is nice. Sometimes people get a metal pole and they cut the center out of the pineapples and they put the pineapples up the pole and then they put palm leaves on the top and they, they make a, it into a palm tree. Okay, so that's the strawberries. Now the olives are good to fill in areas. So the next thing I'm going to do is close to one line of strawberries I'm going to put down cheese. Now my extra, my extra food on toothpicks, I can put around the bottom on the plate. I can put on a separate plate. I could do whatever I want. So there's a line of cheese going down. This already looks nice. And so now I will add the olives. There go the olives. If you're a little bit neat about it and you make swirling lines or you make lines up and down, if you make something that the eye can follow, it's very, very pleasing. If you don't want to do that, if you want to put them on any which way, there's still kind of an art that maybe if there's a strawberry there, you'd want one here, you'd want one here, up and down, you know, different things to balance it out. So here's the pineapple decorated. I picked a sturdy pineapple and it sat very flat on the plate. And if it hadn't, I would have cut a little bit off the bottom to make it be nice and stable. So I'm just going to put a little bit, everyone loves strawberries, so I'm going to put some strawberries around the edge.
I think I will put the cheese on a separate plate. And I will put olives onto this plate. Okay, so this is our great summer lunch. Fruit, hot dogs. Matthew, would you like a root beer float? Sure. I'll put root beer into two scoops of ice cream. You get the cup with the American flag. I get the glass with the Bandura ladies. Miss Natalie last year said, how about root beer floats? And do you know that was the favorite thing all summer. Everyone loved it. All right, we'll let the foam go down a little bit. We'll add a little more root beer and it's time for a hot dog. Okay, till we meet again, bye bye everyone. Enjoy your day.